Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Have you often thought that you could get anything you wanted if you only had the money? Now, by having money, I'm thinking of millions and hundreds of millions of dollars. That's money. Yes, a lot of us think that we could get anything we want if we had it. Now, let me tell you something about money. And I'll do it in the form of a story. Eddie and Mr. Foxy. Frank? Yes, sir. Mr. B wants to see you right now. Right. You know, it's a strange thing about him. What are you talking about? His very wish is my command. <laughs> oh, Frank, you're impossible. Go on and get in there before he comes out to drag you in by the scuff of your neck. <laughs> He'd do it, too. Well, see you later. Frank, where's the deed to the Simpson estate? The deed, sir? Yes, the deed. Are you suddenly deaf? No, sir. Don't you remember that I informed you two days ago that they wouldn't sell? Oh, nonsense. Frank, I'm surprised at you. I told you two days ago to raise our offer $100,000. I did, and they still won't sell. How much do they want? Well, they won't name a price. Frank, you're fumbling the ball, which is something you hardly ever do. Get off the chair you're sitting on and go get that deed. I don't care what you pay for it. I want that estate for my new research project, understand? Yes, sir. But we're already offering a quarter of a million too much for that land. I want you to stop at the doctor's office on the way out. If you say so, Mr. Bartholomew. But I'm not ill. No, but you need the wax to rinse out of your ears so you can hear. Uh, how's that? I'm going to remind you just once more and only once more about my policy. Money can buy anything or get anything you want as long as one is willing to pay the price. And I'm willing to do it. One more thing. You'd better get back on the ball or I'm going to make some changes on my staff. Yes, sir. I understand. It won't happen again. Sir. Well, what are you waiting for? Get out and buy the Simpson estate. <laughs> Yes, sir? Herbert, I'm leaving for the day. What about your appointment with Neil Paulson? It's his 25th year as your chief bookkeeper. Well, write him a check for $200. But, sir, this is a special occasion. He's looking forward to having lunch with you. Write him a check for $200. That's more profitable to him than having lunch with me. Yes, sir. And, uh, oh, uh, call Bradley Westcott and tell him I want a detailed report on all investments. Tell him I noticed he's got some stocks on the list that yield less than four and a half percent. Ask him if he thinks I'm blind. He told me, sir, that those stocks have good growth possibilities. He considers them excellent long-term papers, sir. I'll tell him to get rid of them. My money isn't working hard enough. Oh, by the way, uh, tell him to go ahead and buy that house. I'll make the down payment for him. He's done a good job, but I expect a better one after he gets this house off his mind. Anything else, Mr. Bartholomew? No, uh... Here's my personal file. I've marked instructions on all the papers. Yes, sir. I'm leaving now. You can call me at the house if it's necessary. Yes, sir. Your car is waiting. It's a beautiful day for a drive, Mr. Bartholomew. Yes, I suppose so, Charles. Uh, would you like to try a bit of trout fishing, sir? I've got the tackle and rods in the trunk. No, not today. 
Hey, uh, thought you might like a bit of fresh air. The window's open, isn't it? Yes, sir. Stop the car. Oh? Is something wrong, sir? Yes. Who let that boy down there come on my property to fish? Hey, I don't know. Well, I'm getting out. Uh, tell old Jim I want to see him right away. Yes, sir. Shall I return here with the car? No, meet me at the bridge. Call Bill Jefferson and tell him I want to see him at the bridge right away. Very good, sir. What in the name of common sense is that boy doing? Give him a piece of my mind right now. Hey, boy. Shh. Mister, be quiet. You'll scare the fish away. What are you talking about? Shh. Come over here and I'll show you, mister. The biggest trout you ever saw in your whole life. Huh? You don't say. Where is he? Right below us in that shady pool. I'll pull a bush back and you can take a careful look. Oh. All right. I'd like to see him. See him? Yeah. Isn't he a beaut? Oh, well, I'll say he is. That's Mr. Foxy. Why do you call that big trout uh, Mr. Foxy? Because I've been trying to catch him for a long time. He's too smart to take my lure. <laughs> you say uh, fish are smart? Haven't you ever gone fishing, Mr. Uh... uh... Mr. Uh, Bartholomew, Alexander Bartholomew. Oh, you're the man who has lots of money. <laughs> yes, and I also own this property. Um, I on the other side of the bridge? <laughs> oh, come now. <laughs> don't tell me you don't know that you crossed the road that runs over the bridge. Honest, Mr. Bartholomew, I don't remember crossing the road. I guess I was too busy sneaking up on Mr. Foxy. Is, uh... That why you crawl along the bank on your uh, hands and knees? Well, sure. Trout are smart. If they see you, they take off sunlight and won't come back to the same spot for a day or so. Oh, is that right? Yes, sir. I wouldn't lie about it. I slipped off the bank and Mr. Foxy heard me and took off upstream like a jet. That's why I was following him. I thought I might get a bow and arrow shot at him if he quit running. A bow and arrow? Isn't that uh, against the law? Yes, sir. But I didn't mean a real bow and arrow. And when you don't have much room to cast, you take your lure in one hand and pull the rod back like this in the other and let go. Watch. <laughs> Say, that's pretty good, son. You liked that one, didn't you? And you laughed, too. Lots of folks around here say you never laugh. Oh? Do they now? Well, that's interesting. By the way, you're on private property, you know. Yes, sir. I'll be careful not to do it again. Honest, I will. I know you will. I think you'd better run along now. Sure. I'm sorry I got on your land. <laughs> well, that's all right. Just don't let it happen again. Thank you, sir. Uh, just a minute, son. Uh, what is your name, by the way? Edward Cromwell, sir. Just call me Ed. All right, Ed. You told me before that uh, you wouldn't lie. That's right, Mr. Bartholomew. I never lie. Not even to get out of a tough spot? No, sir. I wouldn't even lie then. My father and mother tell me that telling the truth is always the best thing to do. Because when a fella tells one lie, he has to tell another to cover up the first one. And pretty soon he's trapped himself, and the truth is found out anyhow. My folks never punish me the first time if I tell the truth. But they'd really make it rough on me if I lied. And besides, I'm a Christian, and Jesus wouldn't be very happy with me if I told a lie. <clears throat> uh, yes, I see. Well, you, you'd you better run along now, Ed. Yes, sir. Goodbye, and thank you for not being mad at me. What's wrong? 
Can't you rangers keep people off private property? Well, we try, but uh, your property isn't posted. Say, that's right. But it will be by tomorrow evening. And then, Mr. Jefferson, you'd better enforce the law and keep people off my private property or I'll know the reason why. Certainly we'll keep them off, but uh, what happened? Well, do you know a lad by the name of um, Ed Cromwell? Oh, yeah, I know Ed very well. In fact, he used to be in my Sunday school class till he reached an older age bracket and was moved along. <laughs> sure, I know him very well. And I doubt that you'll find a finer young man anywhere. Uh, is he the one who trespassed? Yes. You want to prefer charges? No, not this time. He says he was after a big trout called uh, Mr. Foxy. <laughs> it has more perseverance than a hungry lion and the tenacity of a bulldog. What do you mean? Ed's been after Mr. Foxy for three years now, and someday the boy will get that wily old trout. I think Ed knows more about trout fishing than anyone around here. He can catch trout when the experts throw up their hands in despair. But he and Mr. Foxy have been matching wits for a long time. Oh, then he was telling the truth. Well, of course, the boy told the truth. He's a fine Christian lad. Wouldn't lie for anything or anybody. Mm -hmm. That's what he told me. Uh, what do you mean? Nothing, nothing at all. You just see that no one trespasses on my property, understand? Yeah. Okay. Be right there. Are you going to scold me? <laughs> For what? For going on Mr. Bartholomew's land. Oh, no, I'm not going to scold you. I just want to tell you that he's posted no trespassing signs, and you'd better not go over there again, or he might get ugly about it. I won't. Besides, I promised him I wouldn't do it. I won't. <laughs> That's fine. Well, how's the battle going between you and Mr. Foxy? He's still winning, but I think I've got something he'll really grab. Yeah? A new lure? Or won't uh, trout strike at lures? Big ones will. Look at this lure. Hey, that's a dandy. Uh, how do you fish it? Well, first I get upstream for Mr. Foxy and float it down past him real slow like. Uh -huh. And I twitch it once in a while so it looks like it's struggling or crippled. Yeah? I got it on this long monofilament so he can't see the line. Uh -huh. If it annoys him, he'll strike at it and powie, I got Mr. Foxy. <laughs> I see what you mean. I'd sure hate to grab that lure with my mouth and get a face full of hooks. Boy, I sure hope it works. <laughs> uh, when are you going to try it? Whenever Mr. Foxy comes back downstream. You mean he's upstream now in Mr. Bartholomew's property? Yeah. There's nothing I can do about it. Mm -hmm. I uh, wonder what he'd say if you went up to the house and asked him if you could fish on his property. Do you think he'd say yes? Well, now, I don't know if he would or not, but uh, I can't see any harm in asking. All he can do is say no. I'm going to go up and ask him. Mr. Bartholomew. Well, Ed, come in, young man. Thank you. Is this a social call or strictly business, Ed? Both, Mr. Bartholomew. Well, go ahead and speak your piece. Well, uh, I, I, I just... Uh... <laughs> What's the matter? Can't got your tongue? No, sir. That is, well, uh, Mr. Foxy is up in your part of the stream again, and I'd like your permission to fish for him there and try my new lure. Also, I'd like you to go fishing with me, sir. I'd be pleased to have you. Oh, thank you for the invitation, Ed. I'm sorry to have to refuse, but... Well, I'm much too busy. However, you have my permission to fish on my property for old Foxy, or, or Mr. Foxy, as you call him. Thank you very much. Why are you too busy to go fishing with me? 
Oh, business, eh? Business. I see. Is that why you take all those pills and those bottles? Does does it make you sick when you have lots of money? Why, yes, Ed, it does at times. There's a lot of worry when you have a lot of money. Some of these pills help me to relax. You should go fishing with me, and then you'd relax real much. Fishing's a wonderful fun. You forget there's anybody else in the whole world except you and the fish, like Mr. Foxy. He and I have a best fun trying to fool each other. Fishing's good for, for you when you're nervous, too. You have to be quiet and sort of rest and relax. And you get a lot of fresh air and sunshine. You ought to go fishing with me, Mr. Bartholomew. I, I'm sorry, but I can't. Perhaps sometime. That means never. Thanks for letting me fish on your property, sir. Goodbye. Wait, wait a minute, Ed. Yes, sir? Do you really want me to go fishing with you? Sure. I wouldn't have asked you if I didn't want you to go. I thought you might just be trying to be nice to me, so, so I let you fish on my property. If I did that, I'd be lying. <laughs> I will go fishing with you, young man. Oh, boy, that's keen. Eddie? Eddie, do you think he's in that pool again? Yeah, that's where he usually hangs out when he's up here. I ain't gonna look because I might scare him off. <laughs> How are we going to cast from way up here? I don't think we are. I'll just wade in into the stream and let the lure float down there real slow-like. Oh, that's a fine idea. You won't know there's a line on it. Would you like to try it, Mr. Bartholomew? Oh, well... Would you let me at such an important time like this? Sure, why not? Wait in and I'll fix up the lure and rod. Well, you'll have to tell me just exactly what to do, Eddie. I'd be pleased to, sir. Okay. I'm going in. Walk around the rocks, sir. They might be slippery. If you try and step on one, you might fall. Hmm. I'll remember that, son. Here I come. Here you are, sir. You just pay out the line slowly and let the Lord drift downstream. Huh. Um, uh, like, like this? Sure. That's just right. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's getting close to the pool. Slow down now. Real slow. Huh? Huh? How's this? Good. Now stop it. Stopped. Now take the line in your left hand. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, like this? Yes, sir. Now make the load like it's struggling or crippled. Not too hard. The trot will see it and get angry and strike at it just to get it out of his sight. All right. You watch me and I'll try it. Here goes. Strike, strike. Pull back the line and sink the hook hard. Strike hard before he spits it out. I, I got him, Eddie. I, I got him. Keep the line tight, really, and slowly. Don't give him any slack or he'll go deep and break the line on rocks or logs. Keep him coming and I'll let him. Look at him fight. Look at him fight. That looks like Mr. Foxy. Pull him closer and I'll let him. Is it, is it Mr. Foxy? No, sir, but it's a big one. A beaut. Oh, yes. Let's take him up to the house and I'll have the cook broil him right away so we can eat him. Just the two of us. Let's make a fire right here and broil him. I know how to do it. All right. Well, that would be fine. Edger did a wonderful job of broiling the trout. It's, it's delicious. Thank you. 
you did a good job of catching him. <laughs> sure, why not? After all, I was taught by the best trout fisherman in this part of the country. Oh, I ain't neither. Not really. <laughs> Ed, there's something I want to ask you. Yes, sir? What if this trout had been Mr. Fox? Why did you let me try to catch the one fish you'd been trying to get for several years? Isn't catching Mr. Foxy the one big ambition in your life? Not as big as being nice to folks. What did you say? Well, sir, Jesus wants us to be nice to folks. Sometimes a Christian has to give up the big things he wants most just to be nice to folks to make them want to be Christians, too. <clears throat> yeah, yes, I, I see. Well, do you always do what uh, Jesus wants you to do? No, but I sure try hard. Eddie, why did you really ask me to come fishing? Do you really want to know, sir? Yes, of course. Well, first of all, I because I like you, and I really wanted you to go fishing with me. And then, I ask you because, well, you looked worried. <laughs> with all the money I have, I, I should be worried? Yes, sir. Some people say you have too much. Oh? Hey, I got to be getting home. It's getting late. My folks are going to start to worry. Huh. I'll have Charles drive you home. Thanks, Mr. Bartholomew. I know a shortcut. I'll put out the fire and be home in a jiffy. Hello, Alex. Hello, Bill. Do you know what's happened to Ed? He hasn't been fishing for several days now. Uh, sit down, will you? What's wrong with the boy? He's very close to death, Alex. What? Why didn't somebody tell me about this? I didn't think you were interested in the boy. Well, I am. What's wrong with him? He has a heart condition. Had it since infancy. But only a matter of time. Where is he? At the hospital. Let's go. What did his parents say? They're grateful for your offer, Alex, and give their permission to get the specialist. Oh, fine. Operator, get me Dr. Felix Hammer of New York City and make it an emergency call. This is Alexander Bartholomew. Yes, I'll wait. Bill? Yes? If there's anyone who can help Ed, it's Felix. He's the finest. Hello, operator? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes, hello, Felix? Uh, Alexander Bartholomew? Yes. Listen, Felix, I've got a very sick lad out here, and I want you here at once. Yes, and I don't care what it costs, understand? All right, fly out here by jet plane. I'll pay the expenses. Yes, it, it's not a pine. We'll have a helicopter waiting at the airport to bring you to the hospital. Yes. Oh, goodbye. Go ahead and say it. I don't need to. Bill, that boy has something I want, something I need... What is it? It's the pure and simple trust that he has in the Lord Jesus Christ. And his parents were very fine Christians. Oh, but he read me like a book. He told me things about myself that, oh, that bear out the old axiom, if you want the truth, ask a child. He has such a, such a zest for life and living. How can being a Christian be the basis of all this? The Lord's given him a fullness and purpose in life, Alex. The Lord's given him happiness and joy. I guess it must be the Lord. Do you know that I had the best time I've had in many years when I went fishing with him the other day? Not once did I think about anything but fishing. And when I got home, <laughs> I slept like a baby. <laughs> Wasn't worried and, and I didn't need any pills. Mm -hmm. Being with that boy was... Well, refreshing and wholesome. 
Bill, how can I get what that boy has? By accepting Christ as your Savior? Oh, it can't be that simple. <laughs> but it is. That's the problem, Alex. What do you mean? Adults find life so complicated that they can't believe that salvation requires a simple and childlike faith of a small boy. Does Ed make life complicated? No, he makes it plain and simple and pure and honest. That's the whole point, Alex. When you're ready to take the Lord in pure faith and repent of your sins, then you can enjoy life as Ed does. You mean as he did? I'll be glad when Felix gets here. He'll know what to do. Let's have it, Felix. I can tell by your face it's not good. Yeah, you're right, Alex. I'm sorry, but the best I can do is to save the boy's life. He'll be an invalid as long as he lives. I've done my best. If you wish, you can call another specialist. Well, that won't be necessary. You're the best there is. You know, Alex, we doctors are only human beings. There are many things we cannot do. God made the human body. It's very complicated and wonderful. And sometimes only he can repair it. I'm sorry I have to give you such bad news. I'll tell the parents now. May I? May I see him? No, nobody can see him for a week. We have to build up the strength of his heart now. He must have perfect rest and medicine. I thought I'd find you here, Alex. <laughs> this is as close as I could get to him now. You've uh, really taken to the boy, haven't you? Yes. But I'm terribly frustrated with myself, too. Mm -hmm. I know. How? Well, you're Alexander Bartholomew, wealthy industrialist, worth... Three hundred million dollars? So far, you've been able to buy or get anything you want with money. Right now, you're watching Mr. Foxy swim upstream, and you're thinking of a small boy who will never fish again. Yeah. All my wealth doesn't... doesn't amount to a hill of beans. See you next week for more adventure with... Ranger Bill! Boys and girls, this is Ranger Bill back again for just a third of a minute with an extra word of thanks to you for joining us today. Hope you'll team up with the Rangers every week at this time when your local station gives us this chance to get together. See you then. <laughs>